Welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. You are watching the campus television channel of Don Bosco College, Kottayam. This lecture is on the prescribed syllabus of 6th semester BA English Literature and Language. Paper is Women's Writing. This is part 3 of the lecture on the chapter Shakespeare and his sister. In the previous lecture we have seen that men at a theatre denied Judith Shakespeare the chance to work and learn the craft of acting. Impregnated by a theatrical man, Nick Green, who was the actor manager, she committed suicide. This is how the narrator believes such a female genius would have fared in Shakespeare's time. However, she agrees with the bishop that no women of the time would have had such genius. For genius like Shakespeare's is not born among laboring, uneducated, servile people. And women back then fit into this category. The Engels, Saxons and Jutes were Germanic tribes who overran Britain between the 5th and the 8th centuries. Saxons was a general term used to refer to all the German invaders. Britons were the ancient Celtic people from the island of Great Britain. What Virginia Woolf means is that the exploitation of women is not a past event. It happens in her own time. Nevertheless, some kind of genius must have existed among women then as it exists among the working class, although it never translated to paper. According to Professor Trevelyan, who is George Macaulay Trevelyan, English historian who rejected the scientific approach to history in favor of a more humanistic and literary approach. Even if a woman surmounted various obstacles and wrote something, it would have been anonymous. The narrator questions what state of mind is most amenable to creativity. She finds that creating a work of art is extraordinarily difficult. Privacy and money are scarce and the world is generally indifferent to whether or not someone writes. For women in the past, the conditions were even harsher. The privacy of a private room or vacations was a rarity. Moreover, the world was not only indifferent to female writers but actively opposed to their creativity. In spite of these conditions, now and again, authors like Emily Bront and Robert Burns blazes out and proved their presence. Over time, the effect on a budding female writer is very detrimental. Women with unusual talents and gifts were labeled as witches. Wolf guesses that the earlier poems whose authors are anon, that is anonymous, that is whose authors were unknown, may be compositions by women. The mute and inglorious Jane Austen's. This is an adaptation of a line by Thomas Gray that is some mute and inglorious Milton that we have already studied in the poem. Okay, Which means that the talented women authors, they remained silent and could become or became famous through their writings. Edward Fitzgerald suggested that it was a woman who made the ballad and the folk songs and enjoyed and was satisfied by only crooning them, that means singing the songs softly to her children. Wolf says that it is true that any women born with great gift in the 16th century would certainly have gone crazed, shot herself or ended her days in some homely cottage outside the village, half which half wizard, feared and mocked at. Any highly talented girl who tries to write a poem would have been prevented and hindered by the people. 
so tortured and pulled asunder by her own contrary instincts that she must have lost her health and sanity to a certainty wolf says that no girl could have walked to london and lost her chastity as the chastity is given a religious importance in a woman's life looking at the shelf wolf says that there are no works by women even if she had written something her work would have gone unsigned kerbel george eliot george sand were writers who used male pseudonyms to veil their identity as women writers pericles an athenian general and statesman who became supreme leader of athenian democracy said that the chief glory of a woman is not to be talked of anonymity runs in their blood and they still desire to be to veil their identity virginia wolf satirically mentions man's instinctive desire for fame and ownership as seishen est a moi means that means the object is mine remembering the parliament square and the sages alley and other avenues where men only given priority so wolf says that in the 16th century the women born with a gift of poetry writing was an unhappy woman with strife or conflict against herself then what about the state of mind that is most favorable mindset for the act of creation do the given exercise and submit on time thank you